Hi, it's Miss Parrot, and this video is about phylogeny. Phylogeny is the evolutionary history of the relationships between all living things. Because all living things share a single common ancestor, we can make family trees, or phylogenetic trees, which depict the evolutionary history of organisms. Phylogenetic trees can look different ways, but we can read them and understand evolutionary relationships when we look at them. So let's take a look at some of the parts and the structure of a phylogenetic tree so that we can figure out how to read it later. Phylogenetic trees are a record over time of how organisms have speciated and branched into new kinds of organisms. So time travels from the base, this is the past, to the present, is at each of the current tips. And if you look at the kind this way, then you're going to go past this to the left and the present to the right. Each of these forks is um, a common ancestor at a speciation event. So a time in which some um, barrier has come along and the organisms are reproductively isolated from one another. Some new derived trait has appeared in one of the populations and it's so different that they can no longer uh, reproduce and have viable fertile offspring. So you have a split. You have a split in the lineage. And so each of these points is called a node. And that's just a when you're going to get a new line of ancestry, a new lineage, because a new trait has been derived. That's what these little red dots are. A derived trait is a trait that's shared among a group of organisms. So an example is the vertebral column right? A spine. That's shared. It's a derived trait. It's common among all vertebrate organisms, right? Fish, salamanders, lizards, birds, mammals, all vertebrates all share that derived trait that makes their group unique from invertebrates. Phylogenetic trees can be broken down and you can understand relationships better if you look at clades. Clades are all the evolutionary descendants of a certain common ancestor. So in this small tree you could count B, C, and D as all being in one clade outlined here in red because these are all the descendants of this common ancestor here. Or if you go farther along in time, then you have this new common ancestor. C and D are the only organisms in that clade. These two organisms, since they are the two that are most closely related to each other on the phylogenetic tree, are considered sister species. Sister species are most closely related to each other and are equally different. They're equally uh, derived away from the organisms in the clade before, in the lineage before. So, this is important to note, especially when you're reading them. So, because lineages can be rotated around nodes, those points of common ancestry, and mean the same thing. So, take a look. I have this tree that has C and D here at the end of sister species. And I rotate those, if I just switch those on this tree, they're still equally related to each other, right? Their common ancestry still comes at this time. So they're equally related to each other, and they're both, that common ancestry is still the same distance from B and from A. So C and D are sister species. They can be rotated, and it means the same thing. So, let's take a look at a big example and apply some of these things that we've learned. Okay, this is a big phylogenetic tree. Phylogenetic trees always on the far side have what's called an outgroup. It's an organism that shares a common ancestor with all of the others, but does not share any of the derived traits that have evolved over time. So in this case, we're looking at lampreys. Lampreys are jawless fish. And then at this node, right, there's a speciation event, some event, at which a new trait was derived, 
that split the lineage off. This new trait were jaws, right? And so now all living organisms, all of the organisms in this new clade branching off share jaws as a derived trait. And then at some point, this lineage branched, and now all the organisms here, so, so lungs, lungs were the, was the new derived trait, and now all organisms, salamanders through chimps, all have lungs, right? Perch, well, they have jaws, but they don't have lungs, so they stay here. And you can see as you go through time, remembering that time moves up the tree, different traits are derived which result in different lineages at different nodes. So here's some of the conclusions you can make. So you could say that crocodiles and pigeons are sister species. Here they are. You could say that lizards and chimps are equally related to perch. But that's because lizards and chimps, ch -ch 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 -ch, let's look back at this node. This node is the same distance whether you're coming from lizard land or from the chimp land, right? There are all kinds of conclusions that you could make about the relatedness of organisms within this phylogenetic tree. Soon we'll look at how to make our own from data sets that are given.